Chapter 9 Single Family Home Investing Landlords grow rich in their sleep without working, risking, or economizing. John Stuart Mill One of the easiest ways to get started in real estate is by investing in single family homes. There are multiple strategies that you can use to grow your wealth. You can purchase a single family residence, live in it for as little as a year, and transition it to a rental property. When purchasing a property as a primary residence, you have access to many different programs that require as little down payment as 3.5%. If you're a veteran, you can leverage your VA loan benefit, which allows you to purchase a home with 100% financing or zero money down. One fact that many don't know is that you can purchase up to a four-unit building with a residential loan, including the VA loan. Overall, the single-family rental market has historically been dominated by mom-and-pop landlords who own a couple of properties and use them to fund their retirement. Another strategy is house hacking, where you rent out individual rooms or a basement to help cover your monthly expenses. For those who can put a 20 to 25% down payment, you can look to purchase a rental property out of the gate for investment purposes. Some investors choose to purchase turnkey properties, which are simply rental properties that have been usually completely remodeled recently and have a tenant and property management already in place. This strategy allows investors a straightforward opportunity to purchase out of state in the best rental markets for future rent growth and appreciation. Next, I want to share the story of real estate entrepreneur, military wife, and mother, Shannon Kiefhaber, and how her family leveraged single family investing to accomplish their investing goals. VA loan to private lending. During our discussion, Shannon shared how she and her husband got started in real estate and some of the challenges they faced with their first property. She grew up in a real estate-minded household, so she didn't have the fear that stopped so many from acting, but her husband, on the other hand, did. Becoming an accidental landlord out of the gate didn't help at all. She shared, We had a bad experience with us being in the military and having to move often. We bought our first house in Virginia Beach, and then we had to move out to California. We became first-time accidental landlords, and it didn't go well. She continued her story. We ended up having to evict our tenant in Virginia from across the country. My husband was like, that's it. I'm done. I hate real estate. It's horrible. I'm not doing it. Some time passed, and he went off to weapon school. Not too long after her husband left for weapon school, she found a foreclosure. She passionately continued telling her story. I knew the area, so I had my dad go by and look at it for me, and we ended up buying it at the auction. I had to call my husband and tell him while he was in the Top Gun training that I accidentally won this house. She was really concerned, nervous, and scared. However, she didn't let the fear consume her. She said to her husband, Listen, we had one bad experience. We're not going to let that deter us from what I know we should be doing. They were able to go through with the sale and continue building their portfolio from thousands of miles away. Shannon went on to tell me that it wasn't always a walk in the park as they moved along their investing journey. Like all couples, they had their challenges too. In one case, she could recall they had a come-to-Jesus moment. I felt like with being a mom, having a full-time career, and then with a Navy husband, it was a lot to manage. He would return home and feel like he didn't know anything about what was going on. She sat him down and once a quarter to do a net worth analyst and review profit and loss statements. It helped calm his nerves and let her keep investing. But over time, 
they slowly started to transition to make it a little bit more of a team effort. He couldn't really take over all the property responsibilities, she exclaimed. We talked about it, and we started dividing responsibilities. He started cooking all the dinners, doing the meal planning, going to the grocery store, and helping out in that way because he liked to cook more than I did. I think it's important you know to share in the load. Whatever that load is, stuff has to get done, and it's all equally important. As we concluded, I asked Shannon if she could go back in time and give herself one piece of advice. What would it be? She responded, I would say, buy a house and move every year before you have kids. We used a VA loan and purchased our first house. I wish we had bought a duplex and lived on one side and rented the other for a year. And once we lived there for a year and then moved on and repeated the process, we could have done that five times before we had kids. Being military, that was our competitive advantage and we didn't exploit it. It always sticks with me as I wish I had exploited my competitive advantage a little more initially. Single Family Investing I mentioned it in one of the earlier chapters, but I will go a little deeper into what I mean when I say you make money in real estate, not when you sell, but when you buy. If you don't buy at the right price, it will be hard to make money. The caveat to that statement is if you wait and hold the property long enough, time erases more mistakes. If you overpaid, but it's still cash flowing, you would continue to pay down the principal over time and reduce your mortgage balance. And at the same time, the market continues to appreciate. Therefore, cash flow is so important. If the market value tanks 20% to 30%, all you will need to do is hold firm, continue to collect rent, and wait. I know a few investors who bought in 2007 at the top of the market, rode out a correction, paid down their principal over the last 10 plus years, and now have a sizable amount of equity in their property. Now, they have the option to sell and roll the capital into another property or invest in a large deal via a partnership or syndication. As with anything in life, there are both pros and cons when it comes to investing in single-family homes. The barrier to entry is a lot less when compared to commercial real estate. You can buy a home for less than $100,000 versus buying a million-dollar apartment building. It's easier to perform your inspections and due diligence versus an apartment building. Furthermore, when buying an apartment, buyers usually leverage partnerships or a multiple LLC structure. This allows investors to limit their overall liability while properly structuring a company to manage the asset. Another great advantage of single-family asset class is that the single-family resale market is larger than the commercial market and has a larger pool of properties to choose from. On the downside, apartments provide more cash flow with less dependency on a single tenant. Additionally, apartments provide an economy of scale by having all the units in the same geographical area, usually with multiple units under the same roof. My number one strategy that I love the most is the buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat, B-R-R-R strategy. This strategy is based on purchasing a single family home that requires some remodeling to become rent ready. I use the 70 to 75% rule to evaluate my deals. The purchase price plus the renovation cost estimate should equal 70 to 75% of the after repair value. ARV. Example, we have a three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,600 square foot home that a landlord in your neighborhood said 
he wanted to sell as is. Homes that size have been selling at $150 per square foot. Our contractor says it needs $35,000 in repairs. What's our max offer price? ARV equals 1,600 times $150 equals $240,000. $240,000 times 0.70 equals $168,000 minus $35,000 equals $133,000 max offer price. Once the repairs are made and the property is rented, you should begin the refinance process while you are finishing the repairs. I love to use my local credit union as they offer great commercial loan products for local based businesses. I own all my BRRR properties in an LLC. It's not mandatory to use an LLC to purchase a rental property, but as you grow your portfolio, it's worth considering for liability reasons, and it allows you to take on debt in the name of the business instead of your name. Lastly, once you refinance, repeat the process. This is a perfect strategy to leverage hard money lenders as we discuss back in chapter eight. Since you are adding substantial value to the property in a short amount of time, the BRRRR method can produce great passive income and scale your real estate portfolio in a short amount of time. To make sure you have a firm grasp of the BRRRR strategy, I will share one of my personal BRRRR projects purchased in early 2021. BRRRR. This was a unique property from the day due to how long it took to purchase it from the seller. We originally contacted the owner back in February 2020 concerning a vacant duplex they owned. They were in the middle of a dispute with their insurance company and tied up in litigation. I consistently followed up with them every six to eight weeks to check in for updates for the next six months. In October 2020, they were finally getting close to having everything resolved when the husband whom I had never spoken with, signed a contract to sell the duplex to another person. All that follow-up for nothing. I immediately thought, as she gave me a sincere apology for the late change of plans. However, she asked me if I would be interested in an occupied rental property they no longer wanted in their portfolio. I replied, of course, grinning from ear to ear. This property was purchased for $84,000 after a straightforward negotiation. My contractor was able to walk the property and put our renovation budget together. We planned for a $28,000 renovation budget and a 30 to 45 day construction period. I expected it to rent monthly for about $1,300 since it was in a good school district. Our hard money appraisal came back with an estimate of $158,000. One of the important clauses in our contract was that the property had to be vacant at closing. The owner had given the residents a heads up, so we weren't planning on it taking too long. However, he came down with COVID, which forced him into quarantine and delayed us three weeks. This was a typical renovation project for us as our niche is buying homes that require cosmetic renovations with a new roof here or there. We don't knock down walls and open rooms and we focus on homes at the median purchase price in our market or less. We primarily work with the 1960s or later homes under 2000 square feet and with concrete slab foundations. These factors all roll up together to reduce our overall risk of surprises and unexpected issues. When we first started our renovating virtually, we paid for the home inspections to identify all the issues with a property. 
so we would know what needed repairing outside of the obvious cosmetic items. You may consider this as well if you're just starting out and don't have a general contractor you can depend on just yet. The renovations finished around the 45 day mark. We went with a new property management PM company for this home to diversify our management so all our assets aren't with one management company. The PM returned with a recommended rent of $1,500, which was $200 more than expected. We received multiple applications and had a lease in less than a week. Going with a new PM company allowed us an opportunity to build another relationship with another local power broker in our market. Guess who a landlord usually notifies when they are getting ready to sell a rental? You guessed right, their property manager. Guess who the property manager calls when they got word of an off-market property someone wants to sell? Hopefully, you or me. Relationships are critical. What if a landlord is selling his portfolio of 5, 10, or 20 properties? One deal can change your net worth overnight. We leverage our local credit union for our refinance who has a great loan product for rental properties. We secured a 75% loan to value, LTV, 4% interest rate for 15 years, 25 year amortization, with the rate adjusting every five years to the prime rate, plus three fourth points. Our bank appraisal came back at $155,000. Our loan was approved for $100,000 $20,000 and our mortgage, interest, and insurance payment was set at $840 a month. Our PM cost is 10% of rent or $150 a month, which places our total monthly cash flow at $510 a month. Our total closing costs for both the original and refinance loan was about $5,500 and we had $1,100 in interest payments during our hold period, which put us all in $122,000 into our deal. At $155,000 value, this leaves us with $35,000 in equity. After refinancing and paying off our hard money loan and carrying costs, it leaves us with $2,000 left in the deal. Now, Let's calculate our annual cash on cash return. $2,000 divided by 12 times $510 equals 3.06 or 306% cash on cash return each year. Now, it's time to repeat and find the next deal. Finding deals needing repairs allow you to force appreciation and start with a 20% or 25% equity position from day one. Long distance investing. I have spoken with many aspiring investors who have lived in expensive markets such as San Diego, Washington DC, and New York City. They shared how hard they struggled to get started in real estate investing as a direct result of a high priced market. However, now more than any other time in history, Investors can invest remotely over long distances. After completing our first fix and flip project in Alexandria, Virginia, about 20 miles away from our home, we decided to transition our business 10 hours away to the Birmingham, Alabama market. It was a great learning experience as we bought and sold homes in multiple states over the next two years. After relocating back to the Washington, D.C., metro area in November 2020, we resume long distance investing with buying, selling, and holding property 14 hours away in the Panama City, Florida market. Next, I want to share a more passive real estate investing strategy that allows you to invest in the best markets with little to no effort. This passive investing strategy is called turnkey. This strategy is simply buying recently remodeled single family homes with a paying tenant in place along with recommended lenders and property management companies 
to streamline the whole process from beginning to end. My friend Doug Spence first got into turnkey rental properties after listening to a Bigger Pockets Money podcast with Stu Grazier back in August 2018. Stu shared how he and his partner, David, had a bad experience with a turnkey property in Birmingham, Alabama, and how they were screwed over after purchasing a subpar property from a local turnkey provider. Ultimately, this inspired them to start their own company to provide cash-flowing real estate to active-duty military and veterans. Doug went on to share how it all came together for him. Around the same time that I heard Stu's podcast episode, I was reading Long Distance Real Estate by David Green, and it gave me a light bulb moment. I don't have to invest where I live. So, those two really inspired me, and I reached out to Stu and scheduled a call with him to chat about real estate. He wasn't initially planning to buy anything from them, so they just talked about real estate and the future of Stu's new company. Ultimately, Doug decided to work with them, and he became one of the first people to buy one of their first turnkey properties in December 2018. I liked it because it was not as daunting a task compared to putting your team together like doing a flip, especially out of state. Even if I was doing that where I was living at the time, I wouldn't have known how to do any of that stuff. I didn't know what I know now about putting a team together. I was buying turnkey properties as a way to get my foot in the door. I've always been a strong saver and pretty frugal, which allowed me to have the capital saved up for the 20% down payment on a 100,000 property with cash flow from day one. Early in the process, they referred him to a local lender to get pre-approved for a conventional mortgage and a local property management company. I just went with their people and it was on an overall positive experience. It was pretty easy to be honest. And what I really liked was whenever I had questions, Stu was very responsive. He always got back to me very quickly and always had a good, honest answer. He was knowledgeable about the whole process, so that helped too. I closed on the first one in December 2008, and three months later, another property became available. I said, sure, why not, since I had the cash. He closed in April of 2019 and got back on the waiting list. The following month, after Doug closed on his first turnkey property, he started telling friends about the great experience and the monthly cash flow he was making. Many people asked him who he knew or if he was from Milwaukee or planning to retire there. He explained how he invested there because of the economic trends and future growth expectations for the area. This concept was foreign to a lot of people, but it made great sense when leveraging the team of local experts, which is the top benefit of buying turnkey real estate. After he closed on the second property, he jumped back on the wait list for another one. However, he didn't close on the third one until over a year and a half later due to the number of investors ahead of him. One of the unfortunate challenges with turnkey is the length of time it takes to purchase the properties due to the extremely long wait list. Once the word is out on the street of a great turnkey provider, their wait list usually becomes lengthy in a short amount of time. So, I know you are asking yourself, how do I find someone on the other side of the United States whom I can trust to sell me a quality house that I may never even visit in person? This was one of the questions I asked Doug during conversation. For him, it's not about the deal, but about people. If you're dealing with someone who's dishonest or just trying to make a quick buck, it's not going to go well. I have personally heard horror stories of investors buying properties that had lots of hidden or unaddressed issues. Sometimes, operators may try to cut corners with rehabbing the property since rehab expenses are the largest share of the overall expense for the project. It's important to know that the deal makes sense on paper, but the most important piece is vetting the operator. You need to know 
why they're selling the house as a turnkey property, what their goals are, and who they've worked with in the past, obtaining referrals and talking to people that have bought from the turnkey provider. So if you are considering investing with a turnkey company, you must vet the owners. Doug went on to share more about his turnkey experience. What I like about Stu and David's company, Storehouse 310 Ventures, is that they're very brutally honest about everything. There were concerns that I had about one of the properties. I can't even remember which one, but the furnace was older and their inspector told them it was an older furnace, but they last like a long time. I was not sure about the furnace and they added a document to the contract stating if there were any issues related to that furnace for three years, they would cover any expenses related to it. Additionally, for Doug, it helped knowing they were also military as he is. If you spend 17 or 18 years active duty in the military, you're not going to get that far if you're a dirtbag and you're not trustworthy. I still contacted references for them and talked to people they worked with in the past. From the very beginning of the first conversation I had with Stu, I felt this was someone that I could trust. Long, long distance investing. I just shared with you how to invest long distance from anywhere in the United States. Now, I want to share a story of how an investor started investing from over 4,000 miles away while living in Europe. I first met Billy Keels in the spring of 2021 at the Mid-Atlantic Multifamily Conference where he introduced himself and shared his story. He currently resides in Barcelona, Spain, where he has lived for the last 15 years but he is originally from Columbus, Ohio. He started out his professional career like so many others. He began working for a couple of years and putting money away in his 401k retirement account. Life was good. Everything was going just fine up until 2000 dot com bubble burst. He became distraught as his financial advisor told him not to worry since this was part of what happens and to stay calm. He continued to work and work, and then this thing in 2008 happened again. This go-around, he lost 33% of his portfolio he entrusted to Wall Street. Just like Billy, most Americans have taken their retirement into their own hands. However, most are limited by their preferred investment vehicles, the IRA and 401k, because they are only able to invest in the stock market. Most of us are old enough to remember the financial meltdown of 2008 that shocked Billy's financial journey and the decrease in the value of everyone's investment accounts. Unfortunately, those at retirement age felt the pain the worst. Those near retirement were forced to delay retiring and work another four to 10 years in order to recapture their lost wealth. For Billy, he emphasized Wall Street didn't take his money from him but that he made a conscious decision to do that. However, one of the things his parents taught him was if it happens once, shame on them. If it happens twice, shame on me. At that moment, he decided it was time for him to do something completely different because he had done everything he was supposed to do in his financial life, but it was not working. Luckily, in 2012, he picked up Rich Dad, poor dad for the second time. This time, he actually read it and his mind was completely blown away. Billy exclaimed, when I bought my first property in New Jersey, my wife and I were in Cairo, Egypt. I remember signing for my hotel room and how amazing it was. I just picked up this property and subsequently took control over my financial life while 5,967 miles away. From there, I started getting better results. Next, I started speaking with my friends who were here in Spain. I started talking to friends who were in the United States, and I was just completely geeking out on everything I was learning. In 2016, after Billy started having personal success with his long distance investing, his friends became interested and wanted to be able to invest with him. Initially, he pushed back and said he couldn't help them. But as he thought more about it, he realized 
he was in a great position to help others achieve their financial dreams. He reached out to a couple of lawyers in Europe and back in the United States and put it all together and created his company, Keep On Cash Flow. His mission is to build a strong bridge between investors in Spain and surrounding countries to profitable cash flowing properties in the United States. It was one of the biggest and probably the scariest moment of my life. At the same time, I really felt I was able to now serve someone and we've been able to continue to do that over and over again. We've been able to continue to serve other people. In December 2020, we actually had our very first investor that has entrusted us with their confidence to the point of $1 million. It is one of the things I am absolutely humbled by because you are having someone entrust their dreams and goals with you. It's one of the things I feel so humbled and fortunate to be able to continue to serve other people. Implementation. As you can see, you can leverage many different strategies as a single family real estate investor to be successful. Are you more of an active or passive real estate investor? Buying turnkey will take a lot longer to build wealth than the BRRRR method since you won't start with 20 to 25% equity from day one. However, if you make a high income and don't have the extra time to find off market deals, the turnkey strategy may be the best for you like it was for Doug. Maybe you are interested in becoming a private lender like Shannon. Therefore, it is imperative for you to understand your strengths, your limitations, and your ultimate goals for your future. These honest answers will drive you to the best strategies for you based on your overall wealth goals to ensure you're successful. I encourage you to set your passive income goals and consider the dollar amount you would like to generate monthly and by what time frame. Is it having $5,000 per month of passive income by the age of 50 or 60? Maybe it's having $20,000 a month in passive income by next year. Regardless, set your SMART goal and begin taking daily actions to achieve it. Next, I recommend you consider starting a journal to write down all your goals daily and ensure your actions follow. Next, determine how many single family homes you need to meet your passive income goal. From there, you will need to determine how much cash flow to expect from a single family home in your target market. Once you complete these steps, you must commit to analyzing deals on a weekly basis and making offers to get the next deal under contract. Next, we will discuss the benefits of fix and flips and wholesaling.